Hello, people, and welcome to another episode of James in the Van, or is it in the van with James? So far this morning, I can't really remember. But what I do know is that it's a glorious day here in Vancouver, and I'm heading to the beautiful city of Coquitlam, BC, to visit the nice Coquitlians, Coquitlamites. How do you say that? If there's anyone listening here from Coquitlam, perhaps you might uh, give me a shout and uh, or put in the comments below what you call people from Coquitlam, Coquitlamites. Coquitlonians. I like Coquitlonians. Let's call them that. Anyway, I'm going out to see Coquitlam people anyway. And uh, I thought, since I have this drive ahead of me, I might talk to you about a fantastic little fight. The fight between the Speedy 100 and the Speedy 300. These guys, both fantastic machines, but we're gonna talk a little bit about what makes the 300 different from the 100. Why you would even want to change from a 300, or from a 100, sorry, to a 300. Of course, the most noticeable difference between the Speedy 100 and the Speedy 300 is going to be its bed size. You guys probably already knew this since it's the first thing you can kind of see when you even look at the brochure. You can see that the Speedy 100 has a 12 by 24 inch bed, where the Speedy 300 has a 29 by 17 inch bed. Both of the beds are a big heavy stainless steel plate, uh, but the 300, you can actually upgrade that one to a vacuum table. Both of them also have a vector grid or a, a honeycomb grid that you can lay your parts down and cut on, which you really do need for cutting. Another thing that separates these machines is the fact that with the Speedy 100, we can only get up to about the 60 watt mark. So 30, 50, and 60 watt mark here in Canada anyway. With the 300, we can go all the way up to 120 watts. So that means 30, 50, 60, 80, 100, and 120 watts. So with the 300, your upgradability is quite a bit more. Now both systems come with job control, but there is a bit of a difference. You see, the level of job control that comes standard with the 100 is let's say less feature rich than the standard software that comes with the 300. Uh, for instance, you can't do the job estimating how long it's going to take with the standard Speedy 100 job control software. Whereas the 300, of course, you, you can. There are a lot of different uh, options that you can and cannot do with the 100. So definitely ask your rep what the limitations of the Speedy 100 software are. It's, there's too many to actually list here in this video, and besides, I would bore half the people anyway. So, if you're going with the Speedy 100 and you're not sure between the 100 and the 300, ask your rep about the software changes, okay? My favorite difference about the two machines is the actual laser head itself, the head that directs the beam down onto the surface. Now, the head on a 100 is built very small, and it, it has to be small to, to fit this machine. So we make this head very, very small with a tiny little mirror on, on top, and you have the, the, the lens at the bottom, and then hanging down is your little air assist tube. Um, that's on the 100. On the 300, we have the exact same head that we'd have, say, on the 360 or the 400. Uh, it's got the, the cone that flushes the air uh, around the optics. It also directs the jet of air down through the same vector as the beam. So we're shooting the air down directly um, through, through the cut, whereas the 100, that little air tube kind of pushes down and, and shoots across the, uh, the part. So um, the, the head is quite different. Uh, also, the, with the head, we have on the 100, we have a, a, a little collar at the bottom that we have to undo and then 
pop the lens. Now the lens is just a free lens. There's no uh, metal encasement around the lens on the Speedy 100. Um, on the Speedy 300, um, you actually have a metal carriage that the lens is attached to. Um, so checking the lens for uh, dust and dirt on a 300 literally takes 10 seconds. Um, on the Speedy 100, you're going to have to you probably put a little towel down and, and, and make sure that that lens isn't going to fall out. Um, it's a lot easier with the 300 to make sure you put the lens in the right way because it's literally impossible to put it in upside down. Whereas with the 100, uh, I've known some people to accidentally put the lens up upside down and for those people who, who really want to know what side is supposed to be down the flat side down convex side up to the sky it's pointing to the sky flat side down okay so big difference for me i love the head on the 300 360 400 on the 100 it works great but uh i would definitely if i was going to uh, purchase one of those machines i'd spend the extra little couple dollars to upgrade to the 300. Another difference is that the 100, uh, you have to buy the stand optionally. So if you want the 100 rolling around on your floor, you want to reposition it from place to place. This is really good with schools, actually. You will want to uh, get by that stand with your machine. Um, just know it doesn't come with it naturally. Uh, with the 300, it comes with the stand right away, at least here in Canada, it, it does. Uh, but uh, you actually can, with the 300, um, take it off the stand and put it on a, on a fixed desk or some kind of a low bench if you really wanted to. Uh, most people don't. In fact, I've never seen it done. Um, but I'm sure there's someone out there who, who does. But uh, uh, just know that the 100 doesn't come with the stand. 300 does. It seems that uh, Trotic's known for its longevity and uh, how our... our very proud engineers in Austria have said we don't want to build a machine that uses parts and so they've built what's called impact technology for those who don't already know this where we are protecting the optics and the motion system and, and other things of course from dust and smoke and dirt that inevitably comes from engraving stuff uh, especially those with flex machines or, or fiber machines who are, who are engraving metal. You really want to protect your um, your electronics, of course, as well. Uh, so we have uh, encased the, the motion system and we put it behind some walls. And as the air gets sucked out of the machine from your exhaust, it's actually pulling the air from the motion system, the clean air from the motion system, uh, to create a sort of a positive air pressure uh, in the sort of the motion system, the optics. So, on the 100, this is the case for sure, but we didn't have room to put those little belts on the side that you'll see on the 300. Um, there's belts that cover the uh, Y axis gantry from going back and forth. Those are covered and those are not covered on, on the 100. So there is some chance of dust and smoke getting into that, that motion system, although we still have the positive air pressure. Still better than not having anything, but unfortunately the 100s, we weren't able to get those in there. The 300, on the other hand, the 300 comes standard with those and it's fully protected just like any of our other sort of 360, 400 kind of machines. So that's, there's a big deal there. Also, uh, I was talking earlier, the flushed, air flushed optics from the uh, robust head on the 300, whereas the 100 um, doesn't have any uh, flushed optics. You have to make sure you're, you're checking and cleaning that lens a little more often. And you know, sometimes it just comes down to how much product can I make in how much time? And you just want the fastest machine possible. Now, the Speedy 100 gives you 110 inches per second travel time on your engraving, whereas the Speedy 300 gives you 140 inches a second travel time on engraving. Now, that sounds great, but if you got 60 watts um, and you, you can run your, say, your plastics at full speed, but if you have only got a 30 watt laser, the speed really is limited to how much power you have. So always think 
I've got all the speed. I need the power. I gotta have the power. This is why a lot of people with the really fast machines, the Speedy 300, 360, 400, you need more power in order to run it at 140 inches a second. Let's say you're engraving wood and you want you know, a fairly deep, dark engraving in wood, yet you really wanna go highest speed possible, you gotta get the highest wattage possible in order to keep up with the speed. It's all about dwell time. Uh, before I was in the van with James, I was in the skinny car with James, and I would drive around in my Kia hatchback with a Speedy 100 in the back there. And I did this for three years, and that thing bounced around in the back, and I took it out of the car, ran it across gravel parking lots in crazy places like Barkerville and, and all the way up north. And that thing went in and out of my car three or four times a day. It, it took a pounding. Um, and that particular machine's serial number was 2199. Okay, this is, this is great. So S12199 was the, was the, um, the serial number. So uh, when I get this van, I have a license plate that's LW, which is Laser Wagon, 2199. Can you believe it? It's not a personalized license plate. This is the one they just gave me randomly. I thought it was a pretty awesome coincidence. It felt like it's sort of meant to be. <laughs> so, anyway, on my travels with my Speedy 100 in my car, I would always leave the focus tool on the little ledge inside the machine. And I'd pack it up into its box, put it back in my Kia, and away I would go. And inevitably, during my travels, that poor little focus tool would fall down on the bed, and then it would rattle around, and it would fall under the bed. Has anybody with a Speedy 100 ever had a focus tool fall under the bed? Yeah. This is a great reason to have a 300. I hate it when it goes under the bed. So when it goes under the bed, you have to take one of the sides apart, pull, pull, the, pull the front down. Unfortunately, the, the Speedy 100, we just don't have room. we got to make this thing compact. Uh, because we pack a punch into a Speedy 100 in such a small little area. So what we do is we put the electronics on the, on the front so that, you, unfortunately, you can't open that front door. Uh, so with a 300, you can actually open that front door, uh, which is fantastic because if the focus tool falls down under the, the table, as it inevitably will in every machine, um, you just open the front door and you take the focus tool out. Um, so there's a big difference for, for me. You can open the front door on a Speedy 300. If you want to load something something awkward into the machine, you open it up like an oven, put the part in, close that door again, and away you go. So there you have it. The big fight between the 100 and the 300. Did anyone really win? Nah, you win, whether you pick either one of them. <laughs> You know what, the Speedy 100 is a fantastic machine. As I said, I used one for three years driving around this lovely province. Um, I love the Speedy 100. It's a bulletproof machine. They just won't break. Uh, <laughs> well, if we drop them from somewhere perhaps, but let's not drop any lasers. The 300, for the price, I would always choose the 300 over the, the 100. The, the price difference is not very much. It's not very great. If you look at what you're getting between the 100 and the, the 300, most people choose to pick the 300. If you're leasing a machine, I mean, it's it's just peanuts uh, every month for the upgrade, and you will not be sorry that you changed. Anyway, I think that's enough for this episode of In the Van with James. Uh, I'm just about in Coquitlam. Well, I'm just about at the bridge anyway. Um, and uh, I got to sign out here. So listen, what I want you guys to do is leave all your comments below. Tell me all the things that I got wrong. Praise me for the things that you didn't know. Okay, don't praise me for the things. But you know what? Tell me. Tell me what you want to see. What I want you guys to do, leave the comments. Of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you already aren't. Because, man, there is so much here. You know, I go and look at this YouTube channel. I learn things from this thing. There's just so many videos I can hardly even keep up. So 
just keep subscribing, keep commenting, and just keep lasering. Thanks, guys.